What is Kino? This is a question that gets tossed around in a lot of circles, and there really isn't a singular definition upon which anyone can agree. It's the Russian word for film, but in the Anglosphere, it's more of an internet colloquialism. In terms of the latter, it's usually meant as a film that the person speaking enjoys, or in which they see great artistic merit. However, if you know anything about people, you know that standards and expectations vary wildly from person to person. I'm just going to set forth my standards and expectations, so that anyone who watches my content knows where I'm coming from and what my biases may be. I'm a filmmaker first and a YouTuber second, which I think grants me a different perspective when watching films. I don't just look at the story and plot details, but also the technical aspects. Cinematography, sound design, editing, costuming, etc. Not to say that other movie reviewers don't do that, but these aspects I tend to hold in higher regard than most other people. Truth be told, working on film sets can kill the magic of the movies for you. You notice everything. When you watch a gory horror film, you're not thinking about how disgusting it is, but you're trying to guess how they pulled it off. I used to love blockbuster movies. I'd see them all as a kid. But I knew that if I wanted to be a serious filmmaker, I had to watch films that were more akin to the vegetables of cinema, as opposed to the sugary tentpoles. And as my actual sweet tooth went away as I grew older, so did my taste for these summer blockbusters. The vegetables were hard to chew at first, but now that's all I have a taste for. I noticed this change with Andrei Rublev. The first time I watched it, I was a teenager, and I thought it was way too long and boring. I didn't get why it was so great, but I figured it was just because I didn't know enough about cinema to understand it. Last year, I rewatched it, I was blown away by how epic and exciting it was, while still maintaining a poetic structure. What I'm saying is that it's normal for taste to change, so it's natural that one's definition of Kino should change over time as well. All I can do is give what I think is my definition that won't change, even if the movies I classify as Kino might. That definition is a film that successfully utilizes all aspects of filmmaking to create a work of art that stands the test of time. This isn't a perfect definition, but it's a close approximation to how I feel, especially the clause that it has to hold up to time, which is a much greater judge than any critic. And for films to successfully utilize all the aspects of filmmaking, it doesn't mean that they have to use them perfectly. No film is technically perfect. There are always going to be flaws, and that goes for any work of art, really. Linklater Slacker is chock full of technical flaws, but it's still successful in what it sets out to achieve. Notice something that isn't included in the definition. Entertainment. I don't think that films need to be entertaining, at least in the mainstream thinking of the word. Many big films rely on old stories and fast-paced editing to keep audiences' attention. But when you've seen tons of movies, these tricks don't work, and so the films bore you. There's an entertainment factor in thinking. There's also entertainment in seeing something beautiful. The Tree of Life and Mirror both have loose, non-linear plots, but the beauty of the images and the questions the films raise are more than enough to keep you engaged. They make you come back to them for seconds and thirds and more. That's not to say that every film I consider Kino is some poetic, philosophical piece. There are stories that demand a bit more of an entertainment factor. But if you're going to say that you love cinema, you have to be able to appreciate the philosophical art films as much as the action-packed spaghetti westerns. If you can't do that, then that's like saying you love painting, but you can't stand Baroque or classical styles, or that you love music and yet you only listen to one genre. I'm not saying any of this to berate you or talk down to you, just the opposite. I used to be the kid that only cared for what was playing in the megaplexes. It took some serious pushing to get me to experience all these offerings I had previously never heard of. Sure, I can't enjoy the films I used to like as much as I used to, but my love for cinema is so much bigger now. I want to share all these great films with everyone who watches my channel. You may not like them all, and that's normal. Maybe in 10 years, I won't like a film I'm gushing about now. I just want to open up discussions about movies that broaden our horizons and force us to view the world from new perspectives. And maybe, in the process of watching and discussing these films, we learn more about this art form that we love, and we can be inspired to elevate it to greater heights. That's the power of Kino.